This is my 2007 Ford Mustang GT, and over the past few years, I've been transforming this pony into a pretty quick, naturally aspirated muscle car. It all started with basic bro mods, like a cold air intake and a Bama tune, but eventually the Mustang's engine was rebuilt with forged internals, upgraded with aggressive high lift cams, and of course outfitted with a full exhaust system, which has made it one of the best sounding American V8s on the planet. It's been a while. I also just finished installing these monster GT500 six-piston Brembos, which not only look awesome, but have significantly improved brake feel and performance. And if you're wondering why this Mustang looks so crispy, it's because in my last video I paint corrected it and applied Avalon King ceramic coating, which has made it look better than it ever has. Now I've raced a number of cars with this Mustang, including a fifth gen Camaro with an LS3, a second gen Dodge Viper, and a 10-speed automatic Mustang GT. But today, we're going to do something a little different. We'll be racing my nephew Zach's completely stocked 2007 Mustang GT to find out how much faster my Mustang actually is compared to stock. And to spice things up, we'll also both be racing my buddy's 2006 Porsche 911 Carrera 4, which actually makes similar power to the stock Mustang. So these 5th gen Mustang GTs are powered by a 4.6 liter V8 rated for 300 horsepower. And when mated to a 5-speed manual, that translates to about 275 horsepower and 290 pound-foot of torque at the wheels. My Mustang's powered by the same basic engine, but it's been stroked out to 4.9 liters. It also has a beefier 6-speed manual transmission that not only allows for quicker shifts, but helps the engine stay on its power band due to more even gearing. All these modifications, along with extensive dyno tuning, have been able to make about 410 wheel horsepower and 364 pound-foot of torque. But you can see it's only after about 4500 RPM where my Mustang really comes alive. And in the lower RPMs, it only makes 30 or so more horsepower than the stock Mustang. This is mainly because my Mustang has aftermarket camshafts that are designed to maximize top-end power. <laughs> But anyway, just try to keep this in mind during our races. It takes a moment for my Mustang to get into the higher RPM since it has a longer first gear. But once it does, we can see what a roughly 130 horsepower difference looks like. Now we'll do a race from the dig where we'll give Zach the jump to see how long it takes my Mustang to reel him in. This 2006 Porsche 911 is powered by a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter flat six that's rated for 325 horsepower. But since it's all wheel drive, only about 270 of those horsepowers make it to the wheels. And although its M96 engine doesn't generate nearly as much torque as the Mustang's V8, this 911 actually weighs about 400 pounds less and it has a six speed manual transmission with shorter gearing than both Mustangs. So this should be a good race. Zach's Mustang hangs in there pretty good until he shifts into third, which makes sense since these early S197s have a terribly tall third gear. Regardless, I thought the stock Mustang was going to put up a little more of a fight, and this just goes to show that dyno charts aren't everything. Other factors like weight, and especially gearing, heavily influence a vehicle's acceleration. Now we'll see what the 911 can do against the exact same year and model of Mustang that just happens to have cams, headers, a better transmission, and a tune.
as expected, it takes a second for my Mustang to get into its power band, but once it does, it pulls at a pretty decent clip. So now we'll try a race from a dig, which should give the 911 a small advantage since it's all-wheel drive. The next major upgrade for the Mustang is an all new high compression engine that will build, dyno tune, and race together. And yes, the Mustang's still getting boosted, I just really want to build a high compression max effort NA engine first. And last, but definitely not least, we'll soon be upgrading the Viper with a new camshaft and ported heads from Prefix to see if we can get it to hang with modern V10s.